So first of all, congratulations to the class of 2021. You guys really earned it. Even though you may not be starting your new jobs right away, it's really important to, to have a strong financial foundation get your ground game in order before you launch. So that means doing an assessment of where you are. You may have more assets than you realize. Talk to your parents, there may be some money there. And also be aware of what debt you have. You probably metaphorically shoved it in a drawer while you were in school, but now it's time to open that drawer and you know take a hard look at where you are, look at what liabilities you have and put a plan together. I think a lot of us had the attitude getting out of school that you had you had the perfect job in mind. You knew exactly what you wanted to do and you weren't going to settle for anything else. What should folks know about that as they're as they're getting out of school? So I think absolutely you should go for your dream job if you can, but know that there may be a few steps along the way and also know that your dream job may not be everything that you perceive it to be. So it's important to understand that your job has to pay you enough to live the life that you want. And there's going to be give and take on that. You may get your dream job in terms of your income requirements, that's great, but it may be a lot more work than it was when you were maybe an intern for that company. They're gonna really put you through your paces and you're gonna earn that money. On the other hand, you may have a job that is saving the world and doing all of these wonderful things for society, but it can't pay your bills. And that's something you have to really be honest with yourself about whether that is long-term sustainable, whether you want to have a lifestyle where you have a side hustle. We've been glorifying side hustles, but the truth is it's also kind of a second job. In fact, it is a second job. So really think about whether that fits into your lifestyle as well and make some decisions. But most of all, know that nothing has to be forever. So try what you think works for you now, knowing it's okay to change your mind. Because one of the factors, and I don't think this was emphasized enough to me when I finished school, is you got to start saving really as soon as you can. Absolutely. People get so caught up sometimes in paying down their debt almost maniacally. And it's absolutely good to pay down your debt. And I don't want to do anything to discourage that. But the truth is compound interest is a really good thing too. And it's important to be investing as early as possible and especially in the right vehicles. If you have a corporate job, you need to make sure you are on the bandwagon with whatever free money they have. So I'm talking about 401ks and maybe other things that your company offers you. Do your homework. It's going to pay for itself immediately because there's free money out there with a lot of these corporate jobs. They may even have programs that can help you pay down your student debt. So make sure that while you're kind of putting things in order and making sure to be a financial grown up, as I like to say, you're also taking care of your future self because getting that money socked away to investing early and growing over time is going to be amazing as you get older. You talked about this as a priority, paying down debt. How do you do it in kind of a a systematic way. I love the idea of putting together a program that works for you. So you have to look at how your mind works. That may be as simple as writing everything down that you owe and prioritizing it. There's different methods. Sometimes people like to pay down the highest interest card first. Sometimes people like to pay um, the, uh, the amount that's the lowest balance. And so you feel a sense of accomplishment, but there's also different kinds of debt. And it's important to understand where that debt fits into the bigger picture. So the worst debt to have, as we know, is consumer debt. That's those credit cards that have 24% interest. We don't wanna have those. One thing you can do with those is consolidate them into a different account, maybe a refinancing or into a credit card with zero interest to give you a little wiggle room. Make sure you still pay it down though. But then you have sort of the middle debt. You have things like student loan debt, which can be very expensive, but it was doing something really good for you, it paid for your education. So let's not put that down, right? But it may have kind of a mid-tier interest rate. You want to make sure to pay that down. And then you have things like, for example, a mortgage. Well, these days rates are still low for now. <laughs> that may change soon. So if you do decide to become a homeowner, maybe you want to go into home investing, you can probably lock in a really low rate. And that's not debt that you really have to have top of mind in terms of paying off. So all of those things, it's really important to categorize your debt and then figure out a system. I do want to also mention that there are apps you can use. I love Tally, which is an app that I do work with um, because they will set you up to pay down your debt in the most efficient way possible. They will also make sure that you are never late with a payment. The number one thing that will hurt your credit score is being late with a payment. So make sure even if you can't pay more than the minimum that you make that payment on time. 
I wish you had been there at school for me. I needed a class like this coming out of school. Was there anything else that you want to make sure new grads know? So a lot of people coming out of college, they want to earn money and they're hearing all this noise out there about investing, whether it's cryptocurrencies or NFTs or SPACs. I mean, it's a whole alphabet soup out there. I would really caution everyone to think about what you value and what your priorities are before you get on the bandwagon with all of this noise. Know your sources, know what your goals are, know what your resources are, and be really careful before you get into that. This kind of trading is not the same thing as investing. That's such a good reminder. And I know we talked about this in the midst of the Robin Hood and GameStop stuff a couple of months ago. Oh, right, we did do that story. Yes, there's, oh my gosh. There's just so, there's so many headlines and I feel like people get caught up in them, caught up in this wave and don't necessarily yeah. always do the requisite research to know when a good time to get in is. Exactly. Well, the truth is, first of all, every time is a good time to get in, but there's different ways to get in. The biggest thing I worry about right now is that people aren't properly vetting their sources of information. There are amazing people out there on social media. There are great resources on TikTok, for example, but that doesn't mean there's not a lot of bad actors there out there as well. So it's really important to go off of TikTok or wherever you're going to get that information, go off of Reddit and really look up who these people are. Many people have agendas that are not aligned with your goals. So understand who you're getting the information from. You can get a lot of information from just watching the primary television stations that cover financial news. You can do a lot of reading in the mainstream press about stocks. If you have a brokerage account at any of the big places, whether it's Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity, and so on, they all have financial resources that you can use. Morningstar is a great resource for researching mutual funds. So do your homework, but make sure that your source is something, someone or a place that you really have vetted and that has your interest at heart. Yeah, it makes sense. You don't want to just throw your money around. And I feel like that's what so many people are doing right now, just along with the headlines. Look, I am a certified financial planner. So I have a bias in this game because I think that you should make sure that you are speaking with somebody that has some sort of credential. The truth is anyone can go on social media and say they're an expert and get infinite followers, right? Having a lot of followers on social media has no relation to how credible you are as a source for financial information. Be aware, many people are trying to sell you something, and that's something that you need to really watch out for. It's dangerous. Another thing you mentioned folks should watch out for is the fees associated with some of this. This is a really important thing that people don't understand. So for example, there's fees and there's also tax consequences. We're getting very close to the tax deadline. So many, um, invest, any, however you invest, someone has to get paid and that's okay. We all accept that. But when you invest in some trading platforms where for example, trading is free, you have to understand where that company is earning their money and again, there's nothing wrong with a company earning their money, but understand that if they're doing something called um, getting paid for order flow, they are going out and they are basically giving your trade to the highest bidder and you may not get the best price on that trade. Also understand, if you are trading frequently, there are serious consequences. There's things like the wash sale rule. There's all kinds of different tax brackets depending on how long you held a stock. So you could be taxed much more heavily on owning a stock if you don't own it for long enough to qualify for the capital gains tax, um, which is changing potentially. But for now, it's really important to understand that you will pay more if you are actively trading when it comes to tax time. The other thing about fees to understand is that even mutual funds and the assets that you buy in your retirement plans within your work plan do have fees. So be aware of those and make a smart choice factoring in the fees when you decide on any investments. Um, and then when it comes to investing in general, I think it's really important as you emerge into the world and you have probably limited resources to be investing one pat on the back that you are investing, number one, but also understand what your goals are. Are you investing part of that money for retirement? Well, treat that money differently than the money that you are investing to maybe buy a home in 10 years, and then treat that money different from the money that maybe is the money that you might have put aside if you were going to go gambling in Vegas. And, you know, it's just your fun money, and you're going to invest that in whatever cryptocurrency is hot that day. And I hope you make money. Good luck to you, but that is very high risk. I don't even want to call it investing. Let's call it trading, gambling, whatever you may. If you want to do that high risk, 
I hope you get high reward. So understand sort of what bucket your money is going into. And you should definitely have different buckets. You should definitely have different buckets for investing. You want to make sure that the money, especially the money that is set up for long-term investing, is going into um, different investments that will pay off over the long term. So you can actually take a lot more risk with that money. You can put that money, if you're young, you can probably go 100% into stocks. You want to make sure you're diversified. And I do want to caution people, when you are just starting out, it's very hard to be diversified in individual stocks. So for many people, it makes a lot more sense to invest in something that will have diversification for you. That could be an ETF, that's an exchange traded fund, or a mutual fund. They both are set up differently. Do your homework and read about the differences. But in short, an ETF trades like a stock and there'll usually be lower tax consequences and lower fees. A mutual fund, sometimes actively managed, might have more fees and more complicated tax rules, but choose whichever one is best for you. I don't even know how to, how to start this off because this is, a, I am 38 years old and I think I have finally gotten to the point where I have a budget that works for me, but it wasn't ever something I was taught in high school, definitely didn't learn it in college. I mean, I took um, econ or, um, economics it doesn't teach you the basics of personal budgeting. So these kids are getting out of school. They're going out on their own for the first time. They're getting their first job. Maybe it's the dream job that pays a lot. Maybe it's they're just starting out. How do you get even started on making that budget? I love this question. Okay, <laughs> so think of a budget like guardrails. And within that, there may be a lot of movement and you have to figure out what works best for you. And it's okay if that changes over time, because the truth is, as we grow and change, we change, our priorities change, what matters to us change. And you know what else? Our resources change. Sometimes we start earning more money and we get more wiggle room. So think about what matters most to you when you are first setting up your budget. Does it matter to you? Absolutely. Hands down, you have to live alone. Well, you might live alone, but you might not live in such a nice place. So you have to think about that. Is your priority your life outside of your home? Meaning you want to spend a lot of money going out with your friends. You've been cooped up for over a year and you don't care if you live in a dump or you don't care. Maybe you want to live at home with your parents for a year and kind of figure out your life and not have that rent overhead if that's an option for you. So you have to really think about what your life is going to be. Let's say the next you know few months, the next year, and then five years. And from there, you can put together an individualized budget. In terms of, do you want to go through um, the actual like, what to actually do to build your yes, budget. Yes, okay. absolutely. This is, okay. this is what I feel like is, is missing so often. We kind of gloss over, but it's like, I need a step-by-step -step how to. If there's anything we've learned over the last year is that we really want our cash cushion to be extremely cushy. And we used to talk about an emergency fund of between three and six months. Here's the thing. It should be more. Of course it should be more, but we weren't even able to get to three to six months. So do some thinking, what would you do if you got to three to six months again, if that happened and we were in this pickle for over a year and you did not have the income that you thought you were going to have? Look around. Could you, for example, if you own a home, have a home equity line of credit that you could tap into? Do you have things around your home that you could sell? What other things could you do? Are there things where maybe you're paying down your loans more aggressively and you know that you could scale back? Not ideal, but still just think through so you'll have that comfort in your mind and be a little bit calmer. Because again, that emergency fund is never really gonna be as much as we want. Then I want everyone to make sure that the right things are coming out of your paycheck before you get that money. That's the whole pay yourself first thing. So make sure you're putting some money away in savings, maybe a, you know, a slush fund after your emergency fund. Make sure that you are making the most of any corporate money that is available to you, for example, in retirement funds, that you're putting away at the minimum enough to get the matching numbers. Then make sure you're paying down your debt as aggressively as makes sense for you but always the minimum payments. If you don't make the minimum payments, that's gonna kill your credit score. You're gonna pay higher rates for everything. You do not want that. Always pay your debt. Then you go to the non-negotiables, which by the way, are sometimes more negotiable than we like to admit. So I would say housing, food, utilities, things like that. 
And I joke about that, but the truth is, as we learned in the pandemic, we may think that our housing is non-negotiable. However, we've learned that in a pickle, we can change our housing. We can take in a roommate. We might move home with our parents. We might have our parents move in with us. There's all kinds of things we could do in an emergency. But for now, let's not think about that. Just figure out what your housing costs. And then you want to go to the next year, which is the mainstream, I want to live my life this way, lifestyle things that you want to be doing in your everyday life. Things like, I want to have that cup of coffee on my way to work now that I'm going back to the office because I enjoy that ritual. Build it into your budget. And then finally, it's the icing on the cake layer, which is the really awesome things that you hope you can afford. And I hope you guys can too. I hope people pay attention to this. It's just, it's so important and it's so undertaught and undervalued, I think, until it's too late, until you realize you're in a pickle and you've not budgeted, you live far beyond your means, your debt is piling up, and now you don't have a way to pay yourself and pay off the debt and yeah. get that and, cushion. It's tough. Yep. And, and the thing with the debt is the debt can really spiral. So I really encourage people to be aggressive with the debt. What you may do so that you don't have to take a hit on the rest of your life is at least for the short term, it may make sense to do a side hustle of some sort. I've become a little bit cautious on side hustles because especially with young people, I don't want them to be so caught up in these side hustles that they're not paying attention to their primary job and really focusing on it so that they get the promotions and the raises that they deserve. It's important to be focused and do a good job in your main job. Don't let the side hustle take away your dreams. And not be exhausted from it too. When you're really working yeah. two jobs, that can wear on you. Exactly. Make sure to have fun with your friends. We're finally getting a chance to get out and enjoy life a little bit more. So I want to make sure people put people first and uh, stay within your means. But definitely, you know, you can have, have go somewhere cheaper with your friends. It'll be fine. <laughs> 